Hey this is Sayyam Botani and you're listening to Chai Time Data Science a podcast for data science enthusiasts where i interview practitioners researchers and calculators about their journey experience and talk all things about data science Hello and welcome to another episode of the Chai Time Data Science Show. In this episode, I interview a researcher, practitioner, and open source contributor. Yes, all three are aspects of one single person, Sergey Kolesnikov, creator of Catalyst, which is a deep learning and reinforcement learning framework based on PyTorch. In this interview, we talk all about Sergey's journey into the field of machine learning and reinforcement learning, his thoughts about open source development. and the story of catalyst how the development of catalyst started the story behind it and its current features the ecosystem and what all can it support we also talk a lot about the community in machine learning open data science community as well sergey shares many great advices about software engineering and open source development as well and i believe the advices are applicable even outside of catalyst framework generally speaking we discussed about a lot of ideas about catalyst and outside of it so please check out the description of this podcast if you'd like to read in depth about them along with a quick reminder to the non native english speaking audience if you're listening to the audio of this po- podcast please go to youtube and enable subtitles because it'll have manually checked and re-uploaded subtitles to help with your watching experience for now here's my conversation with sergey kolesnikov creator of catalyst please enjoy the show hi everyone uh, today i am honored to have on the show a researcher practitioner and open source contributor unfortunately it's not three different persons it's the same person sergey kolesnikov creator of catalyst thank you so much sergey for joining me on the podcast thank you for uh very much for this invitation it's lena it's in really an honor for me to be here on this podcast because it's uh looks like it's, it's the first time i have uh, such a such an honor to make a podcast with someone i, I don't know i'm not sure i'm very specialized and honored to make some fancy stuff but thank you very much for your invitation thank you so much for saying yes to the request now uh, before we talk about catalyst and the amazing framework i want to talk about your journey i think the secret to becoming really good at machine learning is having a name sergey or dimitri and having a background <laughs> in physics is that true can you confirm that belief um uh, i don't think i have a really strong background in physics <laughs> yeah i am graduated from moscow institute of physics and technology with this hard skills in uh, physics mathematics and all the stuff uh nevertheless uh, uh, i think the main the main contribution uh, in machine learning and why it's so important to me it's just my in- internal motivation because it's i'm really fond of uh, this field especially in of the field of reinforcement learning and deep learning stuff so i think it's more about your inner inclination and motivation rather than your hard skills okay at uh, in in your journey at what point did you get interested in machine learning i believe you studied physics in school uh, where did ml uh, catch your interest oh no uh when i was on the first oh, no 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 third year of my university uh i have a large exploration in different uh, programming fields like you know uh mobile development game development all the stuff of development uh, several visualization projects etc etc but uh, later i found you know this a simple example with monist and all stuff and then i was trying to understand 
how does it work? Because I understand the programming, but uh, this looks like a little bit like a magic because he did this uh, picture and then this thing somehow understand that it's one, two, three or something like that. Black magic. Uh, yeah. And it was interesting because I can get uh, this process, but uh, thanks to, again, for, to the university, there was a bunch of uh, courses in statistics, optimization, theory and all stuff uh, during this year and with my also motivation and some interest in this field uh, this gave, gave me some boost to understand this machine learning part and a later deep learning part and then reinforcement learning part also okay we'll definitely talk more about this but uh, talking about your current day you're you're working on open source you're also leading data science teams uh, can you tell us what problems are you working on? How do you balance your time? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, it's a very complicated question because I'm not sure I'm very experienced in balancing my time right. Because uh, usually I just, uh, I have my personal notion with all my stuff, bunch of tasks and everything I need to do. <laughs> and usually when I look at it, it looks like, whoa. So how I can will deal with it? It's really complicated. Uh, I don't know. Um, mm, yeah, just uh, somehow, somehow it looks like I have <laughs> uh, different uh, fields of interest mm -hmm. and I'm trying to work uh, of each of them every mm -hmm. day uh, for maybe um, several hours uh, but because of the number of different fields uh, yes. it gives me an opportunity to work uh, the whole day something like this so when you get bored of work you switch to open source when you get bored of that you switch to community efforts yeah and i'm trying to you know combine uh, all my interests uh, interests uh, around you know the catalyst because it's like my mm, expertise open source expertise in one place uh, so every project I'm, I'm working on uh, so, somehow contribute to the this library to the development to open source and community so it's uh, it's a lot of uh, different uh, fields and tasks and projects and nevertheless there is only one core so somehow it helps. Okay. Uh, there were already many frameworks out there. TensorFlow was out there when you started Catalyst. Why, why did you feel the need to create a separate uh, framework? Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, it was maybe around two years ago. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, I was working with TensorFlow and all the stuff. Uh, nevertheless, then I found this uh, pure amazing uh, and simple framework like PyTorch, but it has uh, one, you know, one disadvantage. It was a really low level, and for me, uh, because I usually take uh, several projects simultaneously, like you know, several computer vision uh, tasks. Why? Why? I don't know. Uh, but uh, I found it it's hard for me to. Uh, keep it in my mind and to, you know, parallelly execute them. Uh, so I decided to make some uh, common tools, some utils to reuse them during all my projects. Uh, and then uh, after such development, uh, there was more and more ideas that were like reproducibility. Then, oh, no, I need some another matrix. Oh, I have another projects that, uh, you know, have a different layout. Mm -hmm. So, and slowly, slowly, it's become uh, uh, not more complicated, but, but, but more flexible too. And with a lot of extensions. And after I don't know, half year of development, I decided to open it for open data science community for open source because. Mm, and now I want to share the expertise and 
I have this idea that with uh, such kind of framework, we can you know, create some kind of tool to um, really you know, gain all this knowledge in this library and to share uh, our knowledge between even different areas like computer um, vision, natural language processing, sound processing, or in post learning, mm-hmm. and have this community of experts, of professionals that can really uh, have uh, this ability to execute a lot of experience, uh, experiments, a lot of uh, hypothesis testing with these two, and to share their knowledge with uh, all this community and to give the boost for the, all this era of deep learning. Okay. So, so, so it and, originated, uh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, and after <laughs> another half, uh, half year of development, we finally uh, make this big package, uh, get list and yeah, finally it's now after one year of the development, you know, uh, around two weeks ago, there was a Catalyst birthday one year yes. in open source. Yeah. So we are really happy that for this one tiny year, we can say so, we have uh, uh, you know, boost from one project to the whole ecosystem. It looks amazing. And I think uh, we, it's, it's only the beginning, I hope. For sure. For the audience, I'll, I'll speak out a few words that might uh, sound very interesting. Open, reusable, reproducible, modular, tested deep learning with software engineering practices. This is not a wish list. This is, uh, these are conflicting words. If I may put together in the GitHub repo de- description of uh, Catalyst, can, can you tell us more about this design philosophy? It's, it's slightly uncommon, at least in deep learning world, world to find these words together. Uh, yeah, somehow, uh, usually when you speak about deep learning, uh, everyone says it's, oh no, it's research. Uh, it's unreproducible, etc. Et <laughs> it's uh, black magic. <laughs> yes, but magic, but no, it's, there is no magic. It's just optimization. It's a little bit statistic, machine learning. is our um, lovely gradient, uh, uh, stochastic gradient descent, etc., etc. Uh, it's just, you know, programming with mathematics, nothing special. So, uh, and with uh, some kind of abstractions and this architecture design uh, you can make it deterministic pure deterministic and really that's why uh, there is some reusable or reproducible modular because okay from my perspective uh, reproducibility was uh, uh, reproducibility really matters <laughs> so uh, yeah and you just needed it it's strange that uh, you can hear that. Oh, now the product is unreproducible. Oh, guys, it's totally reproducible. Uh, re- re- reusable because I have a lot of projects and I need the tool to reuse it. Uh, modular because uh, for you no, know, for different projects you need to some have some uh, extensions or some building some tricks. Books. Yes, so you need to create the, this architecture to make it available for some extensions, plugins, and uh, like for registering all the stuff that we are working on. Uh, but to create uh, this tool, this <laughs> bicycle, uh, you need a really good software engineer practice because just like a programming, it's typical programming, but with this uh, deep learning expertise uh, and it's some, yeah, some unique synergy uh, from both the fields. And I'm really happy. We are, we are, I hope we are somehow you know, really in the middle and trying to combine all to these different fields because I understand that for data science, just, uh, it's really hard to Know, know this all programming stuff, the engineer part and backend development, etc. etc. And from the you know programming and backend development, it's really hard to understand this machine learning part and these uh, algorithms, etc. 
understand that, but uh, somehow, somehow, I like both the fields and try to you know combine them together. Mm. And find, I'm I'm not pretty sure I'm exp- exporting big learning or software engineering, but I try to combine them together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to to talk in a little different direction, these are two different worlds that you mentioned of software engineering and data science. Usually they don't talk to each other in the best practices. What's your take on that? Should uh, data scientists who are sometimes or even calculus known not to write the best code, should they invest time learning into uh, best software practices? Or do you think that's where Catalyst might help? They could use Catalyst to overcome that uh, hurdle. Mm, I hope. Uh, that Catalyst will uh, give them boost in research speed. But, mm, at least I have an idea to some somehow write a blog post about how to run one thousand experience uh, experiments during the day and not today. Because it's, <laughs> yeah, we can do it. We can do it. It's it's uh, really, but it's a little bit hard. Uh, I think for. You know, uh, today we have the this. Okay, and nowadays, if you're uh, trying to make uh, some kind of deep learning progress, you need uh, this um, computation power, and that's why you need this uh, machine learning tools, uh, all these DevOps, and uh, good computer science background. Because if you're just trying to <laughs> Uh, to solve this problem, I don't know, alone with uh, in this Jupyter notebook or something like that, it's really hard because it's an unscalable solution. Uh, just look at Google. It uses uh, there's the, there's this um, a lot of machine learning tools they can yeah. support and a lot of GPUs and servers. <laughs> and um, by the synergy of computational power. Uh, software engineer and machine learning expertise, they gain this ability to create, to push uh, the limits of current deep learning field. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, we are trying to make, but in open source. Okay. Now, um, uh, coming back to Catalyst, uh, if I understand correctly, it sits on top of PyTorch. Uh, can you tell us how it is different from PyTorch and how does PyTorch not uh, fulfill, uh, fulfill the philosophy that you're aiming for? I oh, know. Uh, I think PyTorch is uh, is great framework. It's simple. It's uh, one way of doing. You always have one way to do one thing. For yeah. example, if the, we are speaking about some other framework, uh, <laughs> nothing yeah, to be named here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little complicated there. Uh, but PyTorch uh, by design is very simple. It's Pure Pythonic and the uh, low level. I understand it's it's good, it's a reason, <laughs> but because uh, a lot of deep learning stuff have uh, a lot of the same things, uh, we really need some kind of high level API to I don't know to just reuse it, and that's why where is the catalyst come? I understand that uh, nowadays we have. Uh, a bunch of high-level APIs on top of PyTorch. Yeah, uh, yeah, because we are even right currently we are writing an article about comparison of different high-level APIs on top of PyTorch. Uh, nevertheless, um, I don't know. I think uh, Catalyst have this you know philosophy about why we are doing this because it's not about writing high-level. Um, Framework on top of PyTorch because we love to write high level frameworks on top of PyTorch. No, uh, it's more about to give researchers an ability to test the hypothesis, right? Rather than just writing a bunch of uh, technical code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I don't know. I think that human brain is uh, and human time is really expensive. Yes. So to just give uh, people a good tool to, you know, to uh, remove all this hard technical part and give uh, the ability to test the hypothesis, to test uh, what they really are interested in to, um, to, I don't know, 
I think uh, with such kind of tools, uh, every researcher can give much more value of what he's doing because you mostly think about what you're trying to test and uh, why you're trying to test this hypothesis, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, rather than to debug your uh, some another framework code. Yes, and why is it is not working? That's why we are writing this tool, and okay. that's why we are writing all other packages really, because we are trying to make this R&D process. Uh, more research oriented rather than just pure programming and technical part. I hope we will. We're going. We're going. <laughs> yeah, I hope. It, it's really about uh, taking a step back and doing the science, not getting caught up in all of the nitty gritty details of software engineering or whatever details uh, happen in that path. Yeah. Now. Now coming to the ecosystem, uh, I think we can discuss these one by one, but I want to talk about the different elements inside of Catalyst. Uh, just to name them at first, these are Alchemy, Catalyst, ML Comp, and Reaction. Maybe you can uh, start talking about Alchemy. Can you tell us what it is? Oh, okay. Uh, so speaking about the ecosystem, uh, at least nowadays, maybe you see my post uh, first week mm-hmm. about that we finally released our uh, ecosystem that contains of uh, Catalyst, Alchemy and Reaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea is simple. Uh, so after the creation of Catalyst and some development and evaluation of it, uh, we have an ability to run a bunch of experiments and you know to train a simultaneous, simultaneously a uh, large number of models. Uh, but if you're speaking about the R&D process, it's only the beginning, <laughs> or it's only in the middle. You also need to deploy it uh, for your customers, for your users, for someone who will test it and give you feedback about how does it work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And here comes uh, the reaction framework. It's a really simple one. Uh, it just gives you an ability to, um, you know, to make a tiny microservice with this all these best practices from backend development, like uh, asynchronous, synchronous API, like um, batch processing, like you know this. Uh, I don't know a, a bunch of backend best practices. Uh, but with this um, really simple API that you don't need to know all, all about this and you don't need just to write your uh, typical PyTorch, Python code, uh, make one declarator, and then not like a magic, but uh, uh, really simple, you can get this microservice. And because we're mm, doing a lot of proof of concept, et cetera, et cetera. We have also an integration with uh, Telegram. So you can give uh, another people a link to your board mm-hmm. and they can easily test uh, your model and give you feedback about how does it work correctly or not. And it's really important because I now work with a bunch, uh, a large number of uh, researchers, developers, et cetera. And uh, and just say, okay, you give this model, please write with this microservice. We will try to understand how does it work. I will give you feedback, et cetera, et cetera. And also when you have this, you know, just like, looks like a proof of code of microservice, but with this tool, it's already ready for uh, development. So you can, it has uh, easily, API, so you can integrate it to another system and uh, you know give uh, the value that you, you create with this model. So, and okay, you have Catalyst to train this large number of models and also reinforcement learning part and reaction to deliver it to customer to deploy to give feedback. Uh, but then we'll also have Alchemy. It's uh, it's also another problem. 
uh, when you have uh, this framework that allows you to write to run a really large number of experiments, you need a good tool to analyze what is going on. And here comes another thing. Uh, for now, for now, it's just a simple tool that allows you to monitor and to log all your metrics in one place on the web and also to share them. Uh, just a typical simple problem. Uh, when I was uh, solving new rich competition, I have uh, four or five servers. And for me, it was really hard to simultaneously be on all the servers and to check for the process, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's complicated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you need some tool that will just uh, I don't know, collect it in one place, give you all these statistics, give you all these uh, beautiful plots. A dashboard so of hit, sorts. Yeah. So you can easily compare the models, understand uh, what, uh, I don't know, keeper parameters are best fit for your problem. And also, it's a really important part that you can share uh, the link that any other man can, person can uh, check um, what is going on. Because nowadays I'm leading several groups of researchers and I just ask them to just please share me the link and it's okay. I can easily understand what is going on with your experiments, et cetera, et cetera. So there is no need, you know, to print screen your metrics or give this CSV to some numbers. Oh, no, come on, it's too complicated. <laughs> uh, or, you know, to share these notebooks with the uh, plots. No, you don't need it. You just need one link and I can easily understand what is going on with your experience and maybe even check the code. Mm -hmm. So it's really about, uh, again, boosting the research speed. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I also want to ask about your opinion on how does this compare with PyTorch is, uh, I think it's the ONNX, ONNX ecosystem where you can export a model and put it into production. Uh, sorry, what's again about? Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Catalyst also supports uh, putting models into production. How does this compare oh, yeah. with the native PyTorch pipeline? Oh, uh, yeah, I understand. So, uh, Catalyst also, yeah, you're right. It supports uh, this PyTorch tracing tool. So the idea is quite simple because PyTorch is pure Pythonic and it needs uh, uh, Python code to uh, build uh, model architecture and to load the weights, et cetera, et cetera. But for production needs, it uh, looks uh, strange. Then you need some kind of Python code to understand the model graph. And that's why last year, PyTorch team introduced uh, PyTorch tracing. So you can easily just uh, trace your model and uh, get a static graph, some kind of binary file uh, from your model and easily share it between the servers, between uh, I don't know, different architecture, different hardware because it's just some kind of static graph and binary you know, file. And we use it in both uh, Python or C++ code. So it's again, some kind of productization technique mm -hmm. uh, because uh, with, the, with this way, again, for our reaction, for example, examples, uh, we use only this. We train the model, then we trace it. We get some kind of binary you know, file and we can then easily load in our reaction framework without any understanding about what the architecture of these uh, networks, et cetera. We just need to know the input and output of the network, and that's all. Okay. And it's a really good technique to make this, you know, from research to production quite easily. Yeah. Okay. Now, I also want to talk about something that isn't usually even talked about in frameworks, uh, reinforcement learning. What's your take on reinforcement learning and uh, why Why even support it? Because most of the people perceive it as something that's not even production ready or won't help the world right now. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, the catalyst RL is um, another sub framework of our framework, mm -hmm. you can say so. Uh, it was 2018. Uh, okay, long story short, I am working on the RIPS competition from uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And trying to do my best and some, I don't know, win some places there. Uh, and during the first uh, year of competition in 2017, I don't have any framework, uh, but I write uh, some kind of distributed um, training pipeline on top of just PyTorch, pure PyTorch. Then we get this third place, but no one cares. Uh, but in 2018, I was thinking about that we need to, to something bigger because I see that uh, reinforcement learning part is also quite general, especially when you're speaking about uh, continuous action control. <laughs> um, there was a bunch of new algorithms like uh, DTBG, well now like Twin to the three and to uh, soft actor critic, etc. etc. And I was trying to find some framework that will allow me to execute a lot of experience, mm. you know, to tune the, the hyperparameters uh, as I always like to, you know, just make my research uh, and somehow automate it. Uh, but uh, during two or three months of exploration, what's the best framework for reinforcement learning? <laughs> I have not found it. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, it, awful, awful feeling. And then uh, I understand, okay, let's try to write it. And after two weeks of you know this development, uh, we get this uh, proof of concept version of Catalyst RL. It was awful, but uh, it gives us, and now, as I remember correctly, gives us around uh, fourth place it looks like some of them is just like okay the first experiment uh the first train model and like uh, submit to fourth place and then after uh another two months of the development it gets uh, last uh, state-of-the-art you know algorithms in, in deeper enforcement learning yeah we have already EDBG, the, the free SAC, et cetera, et cetera. And then after another three or four months of development, we are now, you know, you know support. Uh, looks like all model free algorithms with a bunch of these, you know, extensions like, uh, like, like uh, mm, distribution of value function approximations, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, just another world, but because of uh, I'm really fond of reinforcement learning, it's your beautiful field, and uh, for me, it looks like um, you got this deep learning part. This is mostly focused on uh, learning good feature representations of uh, the world and what is going on, yeah, and to make a vector from everything, and on top of it, you have this reinforcement learning part that is mostly focused on this control theory and how to make decisions and for for you know you need to use them you know simultaneously and on reinforcement learning on top of deep learning parts it's like i don't know it's just two parts of the same thing so that's why we are now uh, working on combining deep learning, uh, catalyst deep learning with catalyst RL mm -hmm. uh, to make this synergy and to use all our best practices for deep learning. Um, you know, yeah, to boost our reinforcement learning part because nowadays it's a little bit complicated. Uh, it's like one it's, nuclear element on top of another <laughs> nuclear element. Mm, yeah. uh, as usual it's, uh, yeah. 
research. <laughs> but, yeah, but it's uh, looks like really beautiful, and I think uh, there I have several ideas about how to improve this rail part, and I think uh, after this <laughs> uh, core refactoring of the library, we will get the really interesting our results in both RL and deep learning um, because of you know new architectures features yeah maybe maybe we will try to um, um, combine even an ecosystem and you know try to you know combine the catalyst and drive simultaneously so you can for example training and evaluate and etc etc your model in just in one time. It's interesting, I think. Ah, okay. It's a really technical part, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's it's definitely a lot of fun. I'll have uh, it all linked in the description because we cannot go into much technical depth in a conversation, but for anyone who'd like to check it out, it's already available to the public. It's not some future development that we're talking about. Can you tell us what ideas are supported in the reinforcement learning side of world right now? Okay. In, in the sub framework <laughs> uh, so and uh, nowadays we are support all these model free reinforcement learning algorithms like you know uh, dqn uh, reinforce proximal policy optimization i uh, get yeah, dtbg sac and free etc etc i'm sorry for, for the audience can you tell us what is model free rl and how oh, is it yeah, different sorry, from model sorry. RL? yeah uh, so Speaking about reinforcement learning, uh, okay, uh, it's a field about uh, trying to understand how to make good decisions and how to learn the policy that is good for some tasks. And uh, reinforcement learning tasks are really general. You have only some uh, environment, and you have you or your agent, and your agent trying to you know. Uh, to explore the environment, to do some actions, to understand the world and learn from it, from this feedback. And feedback is really, really tiny because you only have this scalar that says how good you are without any labels or et cetera. It is more, mostly using deploying. Uh, and for such cases, um, or enforcement one, I have two big approaches. Uh, model free reinforcement learning that um, tries to learn the model of the environment. Mm, so just without any you know, bias about to, what is it. And uh, model based uh, RL that have some you know uh, prior knowledge we can say so uh, about the environment. Uh, Catalyst RL is mostly focused on model three reinforcement learning. Okay. Um, it's uh, because it's a uh, much bigger field. Uh, yeah. And in model three RL, still you have <laughs> another diversity, we can say so, mm -hmm. uh, of policy methods and on policy methods. Okay. Uh, of policy methods. Uh, I don't know. They they learn the policy from the, uh, some replay buffer, from some uh, use experience, uh, from just the tr these transactions. Like uh, you were in some state uh, T, then you execute some action T, uh, you get this reward to R T, and get to the state as T plus one. And by this transaction, you can learn uh, the best action. Mm -hmm. uh, and on policy methods, uh, learning from the whole trajectory and trying to optimize uh, you know, the whole trajectory simultaneously. So on policy methods, uh, requ they require you to learn on the policy they have executed just right now. Okay. And all policy methods can learn from any policy, from any experience. They just need these transactions. And uh, nowadays, uh, I don't know, maybe 
uh, on policy methods are more stable. Uh, but uh, they are really good only if you have uh, some a lot of samples from the environment if it's really quick because uh, on policy methods are really heavy and for the samples because they need a lot of transaction to understand uh, what is the best policy. And off policy methods are more sample efficient. Uh, they don't need some kind of so many samples. Mm -hmm. but they're not very stable. Nevertheless, they are more production friendly, uh, you know, because when we speak about robotics or something like this, uh, you can execute, uh, I don't know, several millions of projections, <laughs> uh, you know, break... Uh, Half of the world. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a really heavy cost. Mm. Yeah, uh, so... And so for different locations, you need different methods. For example, uh, for this new ribs competition, there were, when I was uh, competing, uh, mm -hmm. there was an uh, environment that was um, really slow. It was it has about uh, one frame per second. And for reinforcement learning, it's really, really slow. Mm -hmm. So you just don't have an opportunity to run the on policy methods because they can converge on such a speed. But uh, using these off policy methods and a lot of te techniques, uh, plugins, extensions, hacks, tricks, etc., etc., uh, you can gain this amazing uh, sample efficiency. Mm, but it uh, looks like another story because I have another pack of presentations for simple efficiency in reinforcement learning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's our policy. And uh, if you're, but for some competitions, when you have a uh, uh, high speed simulator like uh, Sonic or something like that, like Atari, mm -hmm. uh, you can use uh, on policy methods that are more stable, more easily to understand maybe so just another two different worlds okay. uh, but yeah but still we're combining them and you know trying to uh, even if it's uh, two different worlds um, there are a lot of uh, uh, same ideas uh, very common for both of them and it's really interesting to to you know to see that off policy methods have some kind of extension that you can try in on policy and see how does it work. It's really interesting because it's I don't know. And maybe it's uh, the whole idea of the catalyst that when you, you know get all this knowledge in one place, you can share the experience from one area to all the others, for example and see how does it affect and it's really interesting from my perspective okay now uh stepping back and talking about the bigger picture can you tell us what sort of efforts and research goes into the open source development i'm sure you invest a lot of time into it but to give us a very high level picture yeah um uh, from the beginning of you know contributing to open source Somehow I don't have any free time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, somehow. Mm. Uh, nowadays we are working on uh, a wider range of ideas. For example, for last year, Catalyst was mostly focused on computer vision because the team was mostly focused on computer vision and mm -hmm. it's really good area to standardize and start from. Uh, nowadays, we are developing to NLP mm -hmm. branch. So you can see there are some, you know, uh, BERT uh, pipelines, text processing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and also we are developing our catalyst again, because it's time another area of research that is 
uh, somewhere in between of computer vision and reinforcement learning. Uh, so what else? Yeah, maybe maybe we will try to make some stuff with sound processing, but uh, it's a little bit complicated to combine everything, all this stuff. So also, as you know, we are now refactoring the URL part to make it more user friendly and human readable because currently it's really um, it's more engineering focused focused because of the need of distribution and training just like by the food it's hard to understand mm, yeah and also we are developing this the whole ecosystem also so really a lot of uh, parallel tracks when our development kettle steam okay somehow somehow we're trying to you know not to die uh, <laughs> in this run yeah but it looks really interesting mm. What what uh, upcoming features are you most excited about? Oh, of course, I'm really excited on Kettle Trail uh, second edition. We can say so. Okay. Because um, after this um, improvement, I think uh, we'll get an opportunity to apply all these reinforcement learning part uh, to recommendation systems, for example. Uh, it's another field of my research I'm really um, interested in to somehow apply reinforcement learning to production. What we can do. Uh, and by this way, we you will get an opportunity, you will get this framework, Catalyst, that is applicable for you know, computer vision, natural language processing, uh, recommendation systems, and reinforcement learning. And it's it's beautiful because you have this tool for everything and I hope we will try to you know combine the different ideas and share the experience I hope we can do it I, I, I know we can do it okay just the, the question of time and priorities I'm sure it'll be there soon uh, is there anything uh, in in uh, in the hindsight that you're most proud about uh, something that the library currently supports or some feature that you're most proud of? Oh, mm, I don't know, because I'm really proud that uh, we have the team, such team that is really hardworking. And I'm really proud that uh, um, this initiative is still working because uh, this is interesting project. Uh, I still can't understand how does it work. Uh, I mean, uh, let me plan. After one year of the development, I was make this retrospective about uh, what we what we have get. And then, then, and then I understand that for just one year of the development, we make this amazing progress. And so, uh, like Kaggle integration, PyTorch ecosystem, uh, different pipelines, uh, and no, uh, integration to AI landscape. Uh, we have this uh, award from Open Data Science for best project, open source project. Uh, we have this team that uh, works on in different areas, different startups, and contributes and develops. It. So we have around 50 contributors. We have this ecosystem. Uh, you know, we even had some kind of education courses based on capitalist. I don't know how does it work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. It's something really wow. Um, but still, I think it's only at the beginning because I see uh, a lot of potential what 
can we do with uh, this with this tool with this framework that's why i now focused on the, yeah maybe maybe the most uh, important part to me is this ecosystem because even if we have uh, these good projects good products that we are working on when we're speaking about the ecosystem, they give you much more value when they work simultaneously uh, with this uh, good syn synchronization and synergy between all these projects. Yeah. And of course, I'm really proud for the team, for the community. For, I, I still can't understand how does it work because yeah. uh, all the Catalyst development is based on motivation. Yeah. Mm, there is yeah there is no support okay we have some kind of support uh from our friends uh, like uh, you know i can ask for a server for example and we can make uh, several experiments or um uh, with the ci etc but still it's just um, development on motivation and on the just you know from some some researchers decide to make some cool things for other researchers. Yeah. Uh, that's all. And only of um, this idea, we are trying to develop and create all this beautiful stuff. And it's really hard <laughs> to <laughs> make it done. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not so easy. <laughs> It's it's really about it really speaks about the community. I, I'd like to also ask you about uh, the community that you are an admin of Open Data Science. I don't know how you find the time to also contribute to that, but if you could tell about o ODS and uh, I think Catalyst is of course very famous in ODS. Uh, is is it a uh, part of how you get the feedback for the framework as well? Oh, yeah. Uh, open Data Science was a really important part of Catalyst development because um, two years ago uh, it was the first community I, uh, for which I opened this uh, framework and which I said, oh no, it's too complicated, uh, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a typical part when you're trying to develop something new. It's always, it's, uh, always complicated. But uh, thanks to the open data science, thanks to this community, thanks to uh, their ideas, the, the open data science has also a large number of Kaggle experts, for example. <laughs> and uh, this gives us an ability to easily integrate and to get this expertise from all these Kaggle experts. Uh, for example, maybe you know Evgeny Hvichenia. Uh, you have an interview with, them, with him. Uh, he has um, his own uh, PyTorch tool belt uh, project. Uh, that is uh, also some his expert uh, expertise in the deep learning part in one framework. And what is uh, interesting, it's also based on Catalyst. So it's, it's really cool to see that uh, uh, some really uh, experts in the, in the field, um, in Kaggle and different competitions uh, using this Catalyst and uh, share the ideas, the feedback, uh, their pain <laughs> uh, about the usage, etc. And uh, yeah, uh, open data science is also really, uh, I don't know, mm, mm, uh, it's, it's it's a big community, I know, and you, nevertheless, even if it's, it's big one, uh, you somehow have a lot of friends there and gets a lot of support for the future development <laughs> because it's uh, really important when you're creating some of these 
complex uh, stuff and you need to have this motivation <laughs> from other people yeah and that uh, because you're working all this stuff not for you but for them uh, and that's why it's really important for me and I hope for the whole Catalyst team uh, to get this feedback and support from the open data science community. Yeah, and um, uh, this part that we can, you know, we have this uh, big Slack channel. Uh, it's really some kind of the boost because uh, the loop of, you know, trial uh, and then uh, an execution <laughs> of the uh, our users and giving the, the feedback. It's uh, so it's like another fast and furious are in the process. So we are developing some new feature when we ask our community, hey guys, how are you doing? How does it feel? Then they give us feedback and we are also trying to improve the next uh, release of the catalyst. So uh, it's really good uh, community to you know, try a lot of different um, also hypotheses and improvements that you can uh, want to do and mm -hmm. get the feedback in just a few days maybe. Awesome. I, I personally even I owe a lot uh, thanks to the open source open data science community for being a huge supporter of the podcast. I've I've been great uh, lucky enough to also have many awesome people from it similar to you on the show as well. And uh, for the audience, I'd I'd like to mention please feel free to join it. Even though I personally felt at first that it's a Russian only community, Google Translate does the job pretty well. And <laughs> whenever I talk about Chai or English, if I speak in English, people usually are kind enough to switch to English for my just me. So please do join it. Yeah. Now, uh, do do you think if a Kagler who's listening to this podcast uses Catalyst, can can it be the secret element to a huge boost in the score? Uh, do you think that can be a secret recipe? Mm, I think uh, uh, hmm. maybe you don't want to say mm. yes so that you can win a competition. <laughs> no, uh, thanks to our uh, computer vision, our uh, computer vision based background. Mm -hmm. uh, with Catalyst, it has already integrated a bunch of variety of uh, these classification and segmentation models. Uh, it is uh, so commonly used on Kaggle competitions. And really, if you check, I think, several uh, Kaggle competitions, you can see the uh, people using Catalyst. And uh, it's really nice to see that it's quite easy to get the results so quick. That's nice. Um, and I hope for that uh, more cugglers will use the catalyst and uh, share their feedback about how does it work. Uh, nevertheless, I um, also hope that more uh, engineers, more software engineers and developers and developers will use catalyst because I think with this computer science background, uh, they will easily understand what is going on uh, in the catalyst and machine learning part and um, we'll get this ability to run a large variety of deep learning experience, experience simultaneously. It's really interesting. I think they will love it. So uh, yeah, nowadays we are trying to develop uh, the catalyst for all the areas. I think that the uh, uh, really interested one is, as I mentioned, is uh, software engineering. And uh, then it's, of course, it's our lovely cugglers that uh, really need uh, this R&D process making right and fast and furious and just uh, run a lot of experiments. Mm, of course, we are trying to you know, apply all our 
properties and uh, use the catalyst for indication purpose. Uh, in our health, I think it's a little bit hard because when you're trying to understand how does it work and all this deep learning stuff, you maybe really need only PyTorch, pure PyTorch, to write the code by your hands and to understand what is going on. And then after some experience, you really need these high level keys because uh, uh, you're bored with uh, these four loops. But for the first uh, I don't know, several months, PyTorch is great. Mm, yeah. Mm, so nowadays, I think it's more about uh, you know, these startups, companies, uh, our lovely developers and toddlers. Mm -hmm. Main areas of focus. Okay. Now, uh, to, to, to a beginner, all of these beautiful uh, algorithms and the library might sound intimidating. Uh, I want to point out that it's fairly straightforward to install. You don't need to figure out how to compile it from source or anything. What uh, efforts uh, do you think or what knowledge should one have before Checking out the framework, do you think a beginner can get started with the examples that are already present? Or should they maybe uh, do some courses before taking a look? Uh, okay, from my personal point of view, you really need to take several courses uh, in optimization and statistics, in mathematics also, in linear algebra, to understand the theory of deep learning. And Maybe not very deep understanding, but some kind of um, intuition and simple understanding. And then you can try to write your own PyTorch code. I think that you need really to write it by your hands uh, because it's quite simple. Then after that, uh, maybe after two or months, you can try to use some high, some high level APIs. Uh, um, you can use, you can try Catalyst, you can try another uh, framework. Mm, nevertheless, I think Catalyst is really straightforward to understand, mm, especially, uh, okay, I'm also the person who loves to check the source code of the frameworks and understand what is going on. and. Um, if you will just check the source code of the Catalyst, of uh, Catalyst Core, you can see that it's really simple. There is mm, nothing uh, special. It's uh, really straightforward to understand that we just, you know, uh, have these abstractions uh, on top of four loops. That's all. Uh, so mm, you can try the Catalyst and uh, I don't know, we really have there's good tutorials uh, for classification, for segmentation. Uh, this is really from the beginning, from the, you have some kind of raw data. Let's create the data set. Let's make this PyTorch data loaders. Then, okay, we need some augmentation. So let's speak about augmentations, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Then, okay, uh, now we have this uh, task to do. So we have some data. We understand the problem we would like to solve. Okay, we we'll use this uh, supervised runner, make this train part and get the model. After mm -hmm. that, we also have uh, several advanced uh, tutorials uh, like, okay, we can trace it to make production ready. We can uh, enter it to uh, check some statistics. We can uh, execute some, uh, write some extension to uh, get some statistics, et cetera, et cetera. So, and also for each of our tutorial, we have some advanced part about, uh, for example, using uh, one cycle techniques, using this, mm, for example, for classification needs, it's uh, best practice to use nowadays uh, some, you know, focal loss, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all this stuff, all these best practices. So yeah. It's, I don't know, uh, Catalyst tutorials, uh, I think, really great source of expert knowledge about uh, how to make deploying, right? And uh, I'm not sure we are writing 
all the you know introduction about uh, why it's so important, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, you can check that it's really easy to um, you know to use, and it's uh, a lot of things already implemented, so you can you reuse it in all the projects, and that's why also all our tutorials have uh, I don't know same structure. For example, to prove that every deployment model is, you know, is general and all the CVs can be easily generalized. And to check that you can reuse the ideas in all these fields like discussion, segmentation, detection. Uh, surely we can, we, I, I think we will get soon a uh, generative adversarial networks tutorial and some kind of NLP uh, classification tutorial also. And we can also, you know, show that uh, the same ideas are applicable there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, personally, and uh, on from the community, I'd like to thank you and the developers from the framework. Can you tell us how can we, who are not active contributors, best uh, support the framework uh, as outsiders? Oh, uh, I don't think everyone. Uh, anyone is outsider. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's a little bit complicated uh, because we have some issues. Uh, we have a bunch of issues. <laughs> Sorry, but come on. Uh, it's the truth. Uh, just because we also have a bunch of pull requests and uh, the time you need to check uh, the pull request to understand the, its structure, uh, how to make it correctly, and all the design of the framework, it, it's your time. It's complicated a bit. But uh, for example, we have uh, an open source board uh, of the development, typical Kanban, uh, when we write what we need to do. Uh, also, if you would like to, you know, uh, contribute to the libraries, you can open an issue, you can write your proposal. Uh, for example, for example, for example, for example. Uh, currently we have an interesting issue about how does it pronounce correctly? Uh, error mass normalization. This technique was proposed uh, in article, I don't know, maybe two months ago. Okay. Uh, and thanks to uh, Avinash, Avinash Madasu, uh, he implemented uh, this RMS normalization model and make a pull request with, with it in our Catalyst country. So that's all you need, for, really. Uh, you just propose your ideas. You can ping uh, someone from Catalyst team and we will. We're really excited then when someone tries to um, no, contribute to the library because I don't know, it's beautiful when someone understands uh, your ideas and to, tries to improve them. Uh, I'm really, it's an exciting moment when you understand them. You see another contributor, like, it's always like, wow. It's, um, it's a pleasure for me to see that uh, other people are trying to, you know, mm, you know, to also contribute to what you're doing so many mm, times of your life mm -hmm. because it's some kind of uh, another type of support. Yeah. Um, a really important one. Okay. Um, so uh, what single best advice would you have for someone who's just starting machine learning and secondly for uh, a beginner who's getting intimidated of contributing to open source? Mm, so, uh, okay, from, if you're only starting the deploying and contributing, I don't know, maybe the best advice I can if it's just just do it, uh, there is nothing special. Or you you can 
you need just to understand uh, what you would like to do, what, what problem would you like to solve, then you, you know, um, um, understand what what the goal of uh, what, what you would like to do, mm -hmm. and then step by step, slowly, slowly, uh, you are going to it, and you will, you will really reach it. Uh, it I don't know, just uh, make, uh, uh, you know, make these tiny steps of the progress, but every day, you know, and that's all you need to do, really, I think, uh, just every day, try to make you better than you were previously. Gradient step into previously. the right direction every day. <laughs> yeah, just try to improve you every day and make some uh, tiny, maybe tiny, but contribution in what you love and what you like to do and what you would like to, you know, to be good at. It's um, just day-to-day awesome. -day progress. Um, so what would be the best platforms to follow you and follow your work? Any platforms, uh, Twitter, uh, otherwise? Oh. Uh, yeah. Mm, so, uh, yeah, nowadays we have a Twitter account for Catalyst team, uh, Catalyst core. Also, okay, I have Twitter, why not? Uh, <laughs> um, we all uh, also have this Catalyst info, uh, a wasting Catalyst list on our GitHub mm -hmm. uh, to share some, you know, some blocks we can say so uh, also we have uh, uh, telegram channel uh, with a bunch of uh, mostly it's about development progress like hey guys we have a new release etc etc like with um, ecosystem uh, especially when i'm proud that we have our personal channel in uh, open data science community to look at list, it's more than uh, um, uh, 500, I think, already people there. Uh, it's really cool to see such interest for our work. Mm, what else? Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Twitter, Telegram, uh, and Open okay. Data Science is good enough to follow us. So. We will, it would be nice to see. You can find all of the links in the description of the podcast if you want to check out any or all of these platforms. Uh, my final question to you would be, uh, you have been active in the RL world. Uh, are you a gamer yourself? Uh, what, what? Uh, are you a PC gamer yourself uh, since you have been involved in the RL world? Uh, oh. Uh, mm. No, I don't have a PC nowadays. I have Sony PlayStation, but uh, thanks to a bunch of works, um, projects, um, courses, and competitions, and all the stuff, I don't have free time. Um, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's so, so full, really, because I have this opportunity. Uh, <laughs> but I okay, I have an opportunity, but I don't have a time to to to, to use it. I always ask this tricky question at the last, uh, what, what is your favorite game of all time? And you have to pick one or maybe two. Uh, favorite game, of course, it's Gothic 2, Night of the Raven. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Sergey, for all of your contributions to the open source community and also to open data science. And thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Thank you very much. It's my honor to be here. And Nice to meet you, no? <laughs>Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to give it a review or feel free to shoot me a message. You can find all of the social media links in the description. If you like the show, please subscribe and tune in each week to Chai Time Data Science.